Well, hello everybody. This is Will Robinson Jr. coming to you on behalf of the Eni Pratt Library, Herm Run Branch. Um, basically, what I'm going to try to do, since we, since I'm not at my branch, and we usually have a comic book club, an anime club there, and we can't meet, I thought I'd put together some pretty cool content, which I hopefully you'll find entertaining, as well as um, informative. Um, in this first video, we're pretty much are going to take a look at a lot of the photographs and pictures I took when my wife and I, back in September, visited the Franklin Institute Museum in Philadelphia. And while we were there, we went and checked out their Marvel Universe exhibit. Now, this exhibit was really cool, especially for all you Marvel movie fans, because they had a lot of the props and costumes from the um, the movies, as well as there were a lot of um, comic books and um, a lot of cool photo opportunities, um, a lot of cool statues and things you can look at related to Marvel. Um, so hopefully you'll find this video um, fun. Um, I had to split it into two parts because uh, definitely this is not Hollywood quality. I made this in my basement and I'm still trying to play around and learn how to, to use the video editing software that I'm using. So, Okay, and with all those greetings over with, let's jump right into our pictures here. And now uh, the first picture you should be seeing should be Marvel Comics issue number one. Um, released on August 31st, 1939. This is the book here that started it all, uh, featuring on the cover, The Human Torch. Now, for all you comic book um, gurus out there, this is not The Human Torch um, from The Fantastic Four. That is Johnny Storm. This features, um, I believe, the android is Hammond, Jim Hammond. And... This is the Robot Human Torch. Now, this book um, featured not just the Human Torch, but um, the Submariner, um, the Mass Raider, and Kazaa. And it would be sometime down the road that the Submariner and the Human Torch would actually get into a fight with each other. And this was like kind of a big first in comics because this was like one of the big first times we actually saw two superheroes um, fight against one another. Um, which is now kind of commonplace now, but uh, back when this was released, that was something new. It kind of foreshadowed the fact that the Marvel Universe was a much bigger universe. Um, so, yep, that's some um, stories. Um, this was an American science fiction magazine that was launched of April of 1926. Um, I think the reason why they featured this magazine, because many of uh, what became the superhero genre and a lot of the detective comics and all that nature they all began their lives as being pulp magazines so a lot of what inspired uh, a lot of the artists and the comic book storytelling originated with the pulp magazines and a lot of these magazines um, would also feature a lot of sultry and you know not for kids type of material as well um, so it's a pretty good cool thing to go look up and to get the history of um, some of the pulp magazine um, heroes that I can think of that you might, maybe if you're a comic note guru, be a familiar with a character like The Shadow or The Phantom, um, a lot of the early um, radio broadcast heroes. So um, this is pretty neat to look at to you. Next in the exhibit, I took some pictures of the Jack Kirby display. Now, for those of you who don't know who Jack Kirby is, um, most comic gurus should definitely know who he is. Jack Kirby was probably the most influential um, artist and comic book creator in the in industry. Um, he, Some of the characters that he created in partnership with Stan Lee, the writer, uh, characters such as Thor, the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, Black Panther, Iron Man, and even the um, upcoming e e Eternals. Um, Jack Kirby, what more can I say about him? Other than he is definitely a, a great artist, and his influence and impact on what makes comic books today can still be felt today. Um, so definitely... If you want to learn more about Jack Kirby, I would definitely look him up. All right, so I think this next picture I took was, I think, like a dedicated spot to Marie, Marie Severin. 
Now, Marie Severin was actually one of the few women who were working in the comic field. Um, she drew a lot of the great superheroes in Marvel Comics. Um, she actually died in 2018. So, definitely for all you people who want to know more about the women's impact and the history of women in comics, she's definitely a name that you might want to go look up. Okay, so now we're getting to some costumes. And first up, we have uh, this is, of course, the costumes from the Black Panther movie. Um, these were definitely amazing to look at, um, especially to see all the craftsmanship and the detail that went into these costumes. One of the cool things about looking at these superhero costumes in person, I gotta say, is how small they are. I mean, I know a lot of people say that when you actually meet a lot of these actors and actors, you're always taken aback at how short or small some of them actually can be. Um, so I guess it is true what they say, television does make us all look bigger and larger than we actually are. Um, so this was definitely cool to check out. Um, next, as we continue to look, um, there should be some of the comic, black and white comic pages and the little bio about T'Challa, the Black Panther. Um, now, just some cool facts about the Black Panther. The Black Panther actually appeared in the Fantastic Four comic book series. Um, he was a first. Jack Kirby and Stan Lee were definitely ahead of their time in creating this character because by all means, he's really the first major black superhero. And he took out the Fantastic Four and that first appearance issue. Next, what you're looking at now is a couple, is a little bit of the artwork from the Spider-Man Into Spider-Verse um, animated feature film. So this was definitely cool to see in the, in the exhibit, in the museum. Um, if you haven't seen the movie yet, I definitely highly recommend seeing Spider-Verse, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, because it's definitely one of the best Spider-Man movies ever made, in my opinion. Um, from its portrayal of um, Peter Parker to just what they were able to do with the Miles character. Because I was always a big fan of the Miles character from the comics. Um, but I have to say, it's always cool to see when um, movies and television can outdo the book. And I have to say, it's definitely worth watching. I, th I just think their take on Miles was very well done. And definitely pick up those early issues of Ultimate Spider-Man and check out the Miles character. It's definitely worth a read for all you Spider-Man fans. Next up, we have a picture of Amazing Fantasy number 15, August 1962, featuring um, the first appearance of Spider-Man, um, created by Stan Lee and artist Steve Ditko. Now, the cool thing about Spider-Man as a character and why I think that he works and probably is probably one of the most popular superheroes is because he's just a regular kid with problems. And Stan Lee and a lot of material that you can go check out, when he talks about creating the character, at first his editor did not want to sell Spider-Man because he felt like it was not a good sell to have a character with so many problems and even crazier he's a teenager but um, many fans who know Stan Lee knows that he was not a fan of the sidekicks like Robin and a lot of the teenage sidekicks running around but he famously probably created probably the most popular teen superhero of all time um, which is Spider-Man and I can't imagine how much this issue is worth but it was definitely cool to see that they had this on display and of course, I had to take a picture of this. Um, it's probably the most powerful and, um, saying in all of comic, quote in all comics, with great power, there must also come great responsibility. And that's definitely something worth to live by. Um, um, and, you know, it's, it was, it's just such a thought-provoking saying, and it kind of sticks with you, and especially if you're a big fan of those um, Sam Raimi um, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films. Nothing against the new Spider-Man films, but I kind of like the Tobey Maguire ones because I, I felt like there's an innocence there and it keeps like a core of what makes the Spider-Man character work. 
So that's definitely a definite, definite high recommend to watch. If you have not watched them, watch the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films. Even the third one, I know everybody didn't like it. But as a whole, I think it's a solid trilogy of superhero films. And um, they're just worth a watch. Next up, we have the Steve Ditko display. Now, as I mentioned before, Steve Ditko was the, was the co-creator with Stanley of Spider-Man. He also is the art, the main artist and creator of Doctor Strange as well. And one of the cool facts about Steve Ditko I, that I just learned about and didn't know was that he actually studied under Jerry Robinson, who was pretty much one of the most influential Batman artists. So... Um, it kind of figures that both Batman and Spider-Man have pretty much the the best rogues or villains gallery of bad guys in all of fiction and, and even comics. But um, Steve Ditko was also known also for really bringing some really weird and quirky characters to comics because another character that he created is called The Question, which he created for DC Comics, um, who is also a very strange and quirky character. So... Um, definitely look up Steve Ditko and learn more about him. 